Today's video is me reacting to Business Insider's video, What It Takes to Survive the Marine's 54-Hour Final Test. So this video is Business Insider's video, and they make a lot of great documentaries like this. And I'll drop the link in the description box below so you can find the original video to watch. Um, so this is my first React video, so bear with me. I'm going to make sure that we do this under the fair use copyright law. Alright, let's get to it. This Marine Corps recruit isn't actually injured. My leg! Up! He's playing the role of a wounded Marine during a simulated casualty evacuation that all recruits must complete. Fox, you're breaking down! Aye, sir! Insider spent four days at the Marine Corps Recruit Depot in Paris Island, South Carolina to there is also a Marine Corps depot at Camp Pendleton as well. Traditionally, all male recruits, I guess, from the Mississippi River on to the west have gone to Camp Pendleton, whereas to the east they go to Paris Island, where traditionally the females have always gone to Paris Island. But things are changing now. Chronicle one company taking on the challenge, the last step before officially becoming Marines. As of January 2021, awesome. this group of recruits was the most gender diverse company of enlisted recruits in the history of the Marine Corps. So, I believe as of 2019, I think that's when they started integrating companies at least, I'm not sure, but they're saying as of January of 2021 that, that this is the most gender diverse company in the history of the Marines. That has already changed as of this last week or two or so. The Marines have welcomed 60 new female recruits to, I'm not sure if it was Paris Island or it was... Uh, Camp Pendleton, I think it was Paris Island, but they just welcomed 60 recruits that were females that are going to be a part of um, gender-integrated platoons, I think. It's the first time they've actually done that. And I think the Marines say that starting in 2026 or 28, that's when they want all the Marine Corps recruit depots to be completely integrated. So already, things are just changing. At 0200, or 2 a.m., it's lights on in the squad bays of Hotel Company. Hit it, gun! Light my guns! Get on now! One, two, three, fifty-five! Fifty-six! Yes. See how they're lining up on that line right there? It's called towing the line. In case you've heard that expression before and you weren't sure what it meant. We had to rush, very stressful, thinking about how the day was going to go. Recruits donned their desert utility uniforms, known as desert camis. The first and you notice that drill instructors are wearing their patrol caps, their PCs, and not their Smokey the Bear hats. Uh, typically, drill sergeants and drill instructors, when they go into field operations, that's when they'll put on their PCs. Their first task, a long hike in the cold darkness. Okay, hike, it's called a ruck march. Do not, do not call it a hike in front of any drill instructor or anyone to begin with. Just a ruck march or a forced march or a foot march, but not a hike. Oh my. Approximately six miles in length, so nothing too arduous for the beginning, but just enough that they understand, like, hey, you're on your own. We're not getting you bust out there. You're going to walk out there just like you're going to walk back. So, six miles. 
most likely they're they're going to be doing a 15 minute mile pace. That's about what the military standard is usually. This group begins with an enhanced obstacle course. I don't know why you're smiling when you're struggling with a simple obstacle. Hi, sir. So enhanced obstacle course. Uh, I guess it's enhanced because they're carrying an ammo can. It looks like. Uh, Essentially, this is not the first time that these guys have done an obstacle course. Uh, they have seen at least one or two obstacle course, or I think they call them confidence courses, before this week in training. So, this should not be that new to them. Get on the bar! <laughs> that would be me. That would be me. Trying me being short and trying to jump on and hold on to a cold metal pole with gloves on. Yeah, I would have gone straight down. Yeah, that would have been me. So the obstacle course is out there. They've seen it all before. It's just now we're adding a couple of more factors in there to make it more difficult. Now, they also need to safely transport 35-pound ammo cans across the course. Although this recruit was able to conquer the obstacle, her fellow recruits were not. All of you get down to 15 burpees. I'm out. I'm out. Yeah, get used to group punishment or mass punishment, especially at basic training. But you'll also find that at your permanent duty stations also. It, it just, it's something that's going to follow you throughout your whole career. It's just one of those things about being in the military. Only six hours into the crucible, and tensions are starting to flare. Yeah, you're still doing the same thing. Sir, sir. Yo, you want to freaking roll your eyes at me? No, sir. You sure? Yes, sir. Because I literally just saw you do that. No, sir. So, a lot of times they could get frustrated because they're cold, they're uncomfortable. No, sir. Yeah, so if this had happened earlier in training, he it would have been like three drill instructors shark attacking him. I mean, this is pretty mild. It is the last week of training, so that the drill instructors have calmed down some, but yeah, this guy got off lucky. If the drill started... The drill instructors even suspected that he was rolling his eyes or being disrespectful. Yeah, so. Uh, yeah, he got up easy. Soon have a chance to blow off steam. When they step inside a structure known as the Octagon. I see some fish! This is some intensity! Ah! Ah! First. Get her in the face! Recruits fight each other with pugil sticks. So pugil sticks are supposed to mimic fighting with a bayonet. Uh, when I was in the army, I went to basic training. We actually got to... We were given actual bayonets, and we had a training session using them on our rifles. And then with everything we learned, we then got to do it with pugil sticks, and we also had a bayonet assault course. So yes, the Marines, they are doing pugil sticks, and I believe the Army still does that, but are they actually training with actual bayonets? I don't know. If you know if they're currently doing that right now at BASIC, just drop that in the comments. In one-on-one -on -one body sparring. I think this is a way to just kind of keep them on their toes and keep them cognizant of their actions or the other person's actions. So this body sparring, I think, is a part of the Marines Martial Arts Program. Uh, I'm not positive, though. The Army has something similar. It's called combative. Uh, whether or not they're doing it now uh, for health purposes, I am not sure. But at least we know the Marines are still doing the body sparring, so... Go right here. Recruits fire blank rounds during the event. 
which simulates providing cover for their fellow recruits while they advance. You gotta call that guy to that burn. If you notice that the red, orange, or yellow piece of metal that's attached to the barrel of your weapon, it's called a blank firing adapter. So whenever you fire blanks, you need to have that on your weapon. It's a, it's a safety thing, so it's very important. They're used to going to the chow hall, getting three square meals a day. Now they're going to be receiving essentially field rations, right? Our meals ready to eat MREs. These are spicy. I know they're jalapeno. Typically, a single MRE counts as one meal. A single MRE does count as one meal, but it is about 2,000 calories, give or take. Uh, yeah, I mean, you can have main entree, a side dish, like wheat snack bread, crackers, peanut butter and jelly, and cheese bread, and vanilla milkshake, chocolate pudding, combos, M&Ms. I mean, there is tortillas. I mean, there is, there are a lot of different things you can get in MRE. And not all of it's healthy. I mean, I, I think the uh, the snack bread itself has like six grams of trans fat or something. It's like, it's really bad for you. Lots of sodium and whatnot. Um, but yeah. For the crucible, recruits have to ration five MREs over the course of the event. Dude, you put a lot of water in it, it mix it up just right. It's like pudding. It's the best pudding you will ever taste in your life. That pudding right there is like... So, uh, MRE recipes, if you get on Google, I'm sure you can find a truckload of things that you can make with all the ingredients in an MRE, like coffee powder plus the pudding mix, and then it's just like all these great things you can make. So, just get on Google and see what you can find. ...of the 54-hour event, recruits sleep only three to four hours a night. Yes, sir! And this is where it happens. Buildings? What? Are you kidding? In structures known as sea huts. You know, I was going to say the Marines definitely have the hardest boot camp of all. If I had to sleep in buildings during the crucible, I might have to change my mind. What in? Go! You gotta save his life. I He's sure. bleeding out and die. A simulated casualty evacuation in a combat scenario. I it only takes forty seconds to bleed out. Listen, listen to him. I You're sir. freaking out. You're not making the right choices. I sir. No choice is still a choice. I You're sir. just standing there looking at me confused. I He's sir. already bleeding out. You just helped him slow the bleeding. I sir. So, this looks like this is PC-3, which is Tactical Combat Casualty Care. Essentially, this is the first phase, which is air under fire. What happens is a battle buddy goes down, air casualty. You get fire superiority. You move to the casualty as quickly as you can, check all four limbs, for any major arterial bleeding, bright red blood squirting, you slap a tourniquet on any limb that you find on top of the clothes up high and tight. That is all you do. Then you get casually out of the kill zone, out of that area as fast as you can. That is, and then you move on to tactical field care, and after that is the is the Kazavak portion. But yeah, yeah, and depending on where you're shot, yes, you can bleed out in 40 seconds. So, yeah, so you have to stop that bleeding as fast as possible. Sir, you're being too slow. I you're sir. not communicating. No, where sir. are you even going? You came from this direction. I sir. Fox, you're breaking down. I sir. Now I know that if you ever need to help anybody, you can't even help. 
You can't do anything. I sir. Because he's not okay. Because half his leg just got blown off. I sir. And he's got a tourniquet on. I and he's sir. scared. And he doesn't know what's happening. Your lives are in your hands. Well, You'll be alright, bud. We got you. Let's go. You. <laughs> One thing about the military. You need to grow thick skin. Especially at basic training. Just remember, there is no such thing as a hurt feelings report. I need assistance! Help! <laughs> assistance? It says they need assistance. I would have just said help. Embrace the suck couldn't have been more true here. Once you embrace the suck and you look to your left and your right and you see the guys next to you doing it, it just makes you want to push even harder. That's true. You know, whether you are in the field, or at basic training, or deployed, or whatever, I mean, things will get sucky, and just having the attitude of just embracing the suck, and knowing that the people on your left and your right are going through the same stuff as you, and it makes you feel a little better. So, yeah, this Marine recruit is right on. And some of them will crack a smile, and then you'll crack a smile. As day two winds down, all that stands between these recruits and officially becoming Marines is a nine-mile hike back to the parade deck. That, that one guy looked utterly exhausted. I, I know how tired they feel. It is... Uh, uh, with Army, our FTX was a three-day final event, but it, yeah, it does suck. And, you know, this final rough march, uh, Marines, in a nine-mile, which I don't understand, because the Army, our final rough march is a good 12-mile rough march. It, yeah, but, again, being so tired, I remember falling asleep on the rough march. It was like... One of those. Well, it was like one of those. Uh, oh, so the exhaustion is real. And the thing is, right now, I mean, they're just running on adrenaline right now, and they're so close to getting their Eagle Globe and anchor. And right now, all this cadence calling and singing, it's all, it's really good motivation. So, you know. For Hotel Company, the crucible has come to an end. But one last step remains. Each recruit receives their Eagle, Globe, and Anchor emblem, symbolizing that they have officially become United States Marines. In the Army, we obviously don't have the Eagle, Globe, and Anchor. However, as soon as we got back from our final ruck, like them, we, we uh, received our a pen. So, a shout out to Business Insider for making yet another great video. Link to the full video below in the description box. Again, I'm Kylie, just another Army vet. I like to make military and veteran-related content. If you got any value from this video, please like, comment, and share. If you want to see more videos just like this, then please subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, signing. <laughs>